Manchester United draw again in the Europa League and the United Twins need to speak about it. Blessings to everybody inside, and including yourself, CM Fenerbahce won, Manchester United won, and it was another one of those games. I've seen opinions of people saying we should have won. But honestly, I believe we were lucky to walk away with a point. The home side in perfect synergy with their supporters looked to suffocate United. And I must say, the atmosphere was great, to be expected. But we did accept having less of the ball in order to perhaps enable our most threatening weapon at this moment of time which is attacking open spaces in transition that of course requires the opponent to commit numbers forward and when we took the lead through christian erickson it was that quick back to front football which resulted in the dane calmly placing his strike into the top left corner from just inside for the Bache's area marcus rashford also had a decent opportunity after cutting inside from the right and just Bending his shot wide of the right post. Uh, that was that was probably as good as it got in the first half. <laughs> because luck was ridden. Intensely, by the way. Like a horse at the Grand National. Dusan Tadic's shot. Blocked by Ugarte. And what a block it was. Literally a goal-saving challenge on the Uruguay. Impressive first half. Breaking up play in the middle of the park when things got feisty. And we've seen his ability or potential ability to carry the ball forwards and kickstart breaks on a smaller scale. Hopefully more of that to come, of course. But now speaking about Yusuf Nezeri, who was causing so many issues. And when you think about this season's Europa, there's a theme. Last time out, it was Samu for Porto. Now it's Nezeri and, oh, the double save that he forced Andre Onana to make. Both headers. The second one from even closer was superb. Mm. Mm. One that even left Jose in a maze. The team caught life multiple times, but the danger signs became even more glaring. Impossible to ignore, and when you're forced to play in a way where you need high levels of concentration defensively, it only takes one lapse for that entire game plan to be thrown out of a nearby window. Oh, Littering finds incoming. So it was in Nazari, the man who has caused us problems in the past in this very competition. He equalised and it had been coming. Inviting cross from a deep position by Alan St. Maximon and as Lindelof lost awareness of the Moroccan international swift movement in between himself and Lissandro Martinez, the damage was already done. Headed home before Andre Onani even had time to deep the number of goals he'll concede for the remainder of this campaign. I would say the the rest of the second period lacked quality in crucial moments as per the script and now we can look at our 21st position in the well, Europa League phase of this competition Whatever. having drawn three all three games twice away and, and once at home what exactly does that mean from a current day perspective not great at all because we have now only won once in our last 12 European outings, I believe. Failed to win in our last six European games for the first time since 1980-83. pre sir Addicts. In fact, in that stretch, we had two different managers. Dave Sexton and the final one being Ron Atkinson. Finally, 1983 was 41 years ago. Almost 42. So happy Halloween to that. <laughs> You good? Yo. Uh, yeah. I ain't seen that guy in a long time. Huh? Yeah, don't worry about it. We, we also have to have the conversation about Amagiallo circling because for the good part of our last six games, let's say, we haven't really seen him featured as much as expected. Not at the start of this campaign. We spoke about him being a doubt, I think, in a preview before Brentford. Insert the clip. He was on the bench and played zero minutes. A repeat of Aston Villa where the same happened. Decent time against Porto and then five minutes versus Spurs. A lot of inconsistencies considering the fact that Ahmad has shown promise and an element of change on that right wing, which 
maybe working to his disadvantage potentially a guy that likes to receive the ball to feet and take on defenders more of a chance creator with an element of efficiency which is different than any of the wingers we have at the club right now which in theory should be a godsend as a side that historically struggles to create and convert opportunities sadly however i do believe that things are moving in a backward force again and and what what does that situation mean if things don't change i mean anthony has been brought off the bench now on a few occasions and i haven't quite seen the impact required for those tactical switches to become a trusted and regular occurrence how do you all feel in the comments about Ahmad's situation am i overreacting or are there real causes for concern away from all of that strange stuff at the start of what you were saying i don't think in your case it's an overreaction it was baffling to see Majorawi in the 10, regardless of if he's had experience in that position previously. Curiosity needs taming from time to time, but with this manager at the moment, the feelings only intensify. Too many questions right now are circling around like bloodthirsty sharks. So many questions without clear answers, unfortunately. On a side note, apologies for missing the vibe check. That's on us and we'll get one out before West Ham for sure. Speaking of the Hammers, it on paper is a great opportunity to get back-to-back -back victories in the league. We do have to be wary of our tendencies, allowing situations of comfort to suddenly animate into a scene or scenes of engulfed flames. No escape at all. Just prayers that will make it to 90 minutes without burst water mains. Give us some early predictions for the Sunday showdown in London. Tell us how you felt about Manchester United's away draw against Jose Mourinho's Fenerbahce. Hit that like button, subscribe if you're new and share to your friends and frenemies. Until the next time, we'll see you lots in a bit.